Visit sayarite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. This tutorial video will show you how to make a custom RV brawl to protect your investment. This video is part of our Airstream Argosy renovation. We'll be renovating an Airstream from top to bottom, inside and out. Join us for this exciting video series project. Protect the front of your RV with a brawl that you can custom make to fit your particular RV. We'll show you all the steps required to pattern and make your own out of materials and supplies from Sailrite. The first step is patterning. We're going to take a pattern of the rock guard or the brawl cover here and we're going to go all the way to this railing here and to this railing. We're going to come around the side and stop here and then what we're going to do is we're going to have the fabric have a cutout here for this area and also a cutout here with rounded corners. So we're going to use Duraskrim pattern material here because there is a little bit of a shape to it and we really want it to fit well so it doesn't blow around in the wind. So I'm going to put a strapping tape uh, along this edge here and then what we'll do is we'll put double sided tape on top of this and this will give us a good base for the uh, the uh, patterning material. So we're putting it down here at the bottom here to hold the pattern material down. Now I'm not going to put it all the way around here. I'm just going to cut it here. Well the pattern material will pretty much stay down. What I might do is put it here in the middle just so that I can stick it here. This uh, strapping tape makes it easy for us to pull off the double sided tape. If you don't use the strapping tape, the double sided tape won't pull off of the surface easily. Now I'm putting double-sided tape. This is our part number 129, which works great for patterning right on top of the strapping tape. So I'll do this all on the top and the bottom. We're going to peel off the transfer paper, revealing the double-sided tape everywhere. And I'm just going to stick it on there so that it's flush with the trim here at the top edge first. Stick it on this top edge without being very precise because you'll probably have to move it around. We're just trying to get the general size. Okay, you want to cut this to, to the approximate size right away because too much fabric makes it very difficult to get anything uh, to stick right and also uh, will cause all kinds of problems. So I'm going to cut it to approximately the size, hopefully leaving enough to hit my tape. So we have a obstacle here and obviously here so the pattern material will not lay flat until we get some relief cuts into it. Actually this is the center here but it doesn't matter how many relief cuts you make as long as you don't cut into where the actual uh, canvas is going to be. So there that allows the fabric to go around here. Might want to cut a little bit here too. When I say fabric I'm actually talking about the Duraskrim pattern material because that's what we're using here. Yeah, there we go. I'm not going to have the cover cover this light, so I'm going to cut very close to this to allow this to protrude through. And we'll be drawing around this with a marker to indicate right where it's at. So don't worry if you aren't cutting in the exact right spot. You just want to allow the fabric to uh, let this protrude out. I'm sorry, not the fabric, the pattern material. So now it can escape out of this and we'll just cut this off right along the top. So I want to cut all the way to the actual RV on the edges to allow the fabric to rest there. So now we have, I believe, most of the uh, obstacles out of the way. So we'll come back over here, everything's basted down well, and we'll start to try to get these wrinkles out of here. So we can't follow this line because to get the wrinkles out, see how it comes down? But that's okay, we have plenty of material. So what we'll do is we'll unbaste it here, trying to keep it in the general spot, and we'll lift it up a little bit so that we have some material to play with to get those wrinkles out. So now I'm coming along here, and then I'll try to smooth it all out and start here at this corner and base down here. Now look, see all the wrinkles are out? If they're not, just rebaste it again until they are. That looks good. We have some obstacles here that need to have some more relief cuts out of it. 
we're not going to be using any material down here so I can cut all the way to this corner and smooth it out. And then up here I've got a little wrinkle so I'll just lift this up. And that looks really good for that one side there. So that's what you want to do. Now I didn't put any basting tape here with the strapping tape, but you can. I did put some here in the middle so I can put that down right there because I have a little piece here. Now we'll go on the other side and do the same. We're not going to show this whole process since it's done exactly the same way as it was on the other side. Let's move on. So once we're happy, we're going to take a marker and we're going to mark right underneath the rub rail on the Duraskrim pattern material. So this is pretty easy. And we're going to do it down here as well at this rub rail. And we're going to go up here and follow this trim. We're going to just mark right along the trim. Now the light, we're going to have a cutout for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roughly try to draw it pretty neat, but I want a little bit bigger cutout for the light just so that we don't have to worry about the fabric running into it. So I'm just going to make it kind of neat, hopefully, like that. I'm going to take a yardstick here and try to make it vertical. Now if you wanted to do this, you could use a level. And I'm going to start here at the light so that we are uniform on both sides. Does that look uniform or does that look vertical? I think so. And we're just going to strike a line down here. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Once you have it patterned and marked, make sure you mark what the front side is because once you get it off, you won't know. So F R O N T, front. Now we'll just take the pattern material off. After the pattern material is removed, remove the strapping tape so it doesn't become bonded well to the RV. It comes off nicely. Our pattern is laid out on the table and we are going to actually sew a binding around the perimeter of this. So before we cut it out, we need to think about how the binding is going to go on. At 90 degree turns, usually what you do is you run the binding over past the 90 degree turn and then over top of it and then you cut the end off. However, if you make a gradual turn, you can sew outside parameters pretty easily. And to do that, we like to use the flexible curve, but you can also do it by hand as well. So a gradual curve like this actually works quite well. And then we can continue our, our, our uh, binding around this without having to cut it. So that works well there. This is an inside curve. Inside curves are a little bit tougher for binding to go around, but this is very gradual, so this will work great. Stop here. This is where the light comes out, and we were going to just cut around it, but again, we had to think about the binding. Now, I definitely want binding to go here because otherwise it'll be uh, black and then no black here if I did a facing. So I'm going to have binding go here. This is an inside curve, and it's, it's okay. It'll be a little bit difficult to do, but we can do it. This is a 90 degree and I don't necessarily want to run it off the edge here and then cut another piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the flexible uh, curve here and I'm going to make a S shape with a gradual turn so that I can just do this all in one pass fairly easily. So something like, well let's do it on this side so that you can see what I'm doing. So like this. And we will have it join up to this line. We'll have a curve here, and then we'll have it come around here and curve to a straight line there. And this will allow us to run the binding without having to stop, and we'll still be able to do this inside curve because it's not a terrible sharp turn. One way to transfer this same shape to this side is to actually fold the Duraskrim pattern material in the center position and then transfer it on the other side of the Duraskrim. Now we can just mark on this side of the pattern material following that same curve. And that looks like it's about the same there. Now we're going to cut out our Duraskrim pattern material with scissors on our black mark. Now we don't want to make this bigger. The binding will actually make it slightly bigger by probably an eighth of an inch. 
but also sewing it will shrink it up a little bit, but that's okay because uh, we trace this right along the edges of our uh, RV. Now we've decided instead of having 90 degree turns like we talked about earlier and running the binding off and then covering it and cutting off the end, why not make it a rounded edge? And so we're gonna do that at all the corners just so that we can have a continuous piece of binding all the way around the perimeter. So I'm gonna use a flexible curve. You could just do this by hand if you don't have this obviously and make it a general rounded corner like this. And I'll do this to all four corners. So now we can run the binding all the way around without having to cut it. Now that we have a pattern, it's time to cut our material to size. We're gonna use Odyssey Soft Touch, which is a polyester fabric that's available in multiple colors from Sarite that's, that's very tough and UV resistant with a polyester soft backing that is uh, gonna provide excellent protection for your RV. We've laid in our pattern material on top of the fabric with the front side uh, point facing up, and this is the outside surface of the fabric. And I'm gonna put sandbags on the pattern material to hopefully keep it in place as we pattern around it. Now, sometimes what I like to do is I like to use a straight edge. Uh, that way it makes it a lot faster for patterning on straight edges like this. And I'm using a, uh, a uh, soapstone pencil that's available from say right to mark the fabric. So here at the corner, I'm just gonna trace around that. And then let's see, this isn't perfectly straight, but I can still use this to kind of hold the fabric down as I trace next to it. So we're gonna go all around the perimeter. So we have this side patterned, and what I like to do is I like to actually move the fabric on the table, and then once I get to my sandbag, I'll just move it down so that nothing moves and then I can start tracing the other side if the sandbag gets ready to fall off I just move it down the other end and we will start patterning this side now now you can see here that I have it patterned but another way to actually do this without having to trace around it is to use the sandbags and just use your scissors and cut along the uh, pattern material this actually works well, as long as you don't move the pattern material. So this is a choice that you can make, or you can trace it like we did and move the pattern material, because this is not probably as accurate as marking it like we did. Now we don't need to use a hot knife for this material, because we're gonna be binding it, and this material doesn't really unravel anyway, so I'm just using scissors. Next, we'll be sewing binding on the edges. We're gonna put fasteners in this, snaps, and we are not gonna do a single or a double hem around the perimeter. We're only gonna put binding on, but every time we put a snap in, we're gonna reinforce it with some of the scrap material by folding it twice. So we go through three layers, and we're not gonna sew that scrap in, so we're just gonna determine where the snaps go in a future step, fold the material, and then put the snap in. It's not a bad idea to do some test sewing to test your tension. I'm using a top notch nine binding, one inch in the one inch swing away binder. And uh, I'm gonna sew this little piece of scrap with a straight stitch of about six millimeters. And then I'm gonna look to see if I like my stitch. And then if I do, then I know I have tension right. The top side looks great. Yeah, the bottom side looks awesome as well. So what I've got is I've got my binding in here, but I'm gonna let it hang just outside the tip. I'm gonna push my binder over. I'm gonna push the fabric in all the way to the fold. Then I'm gonna lower my foot and create a stitch. And then when I, then I'm gonna push my binding into that stitch because so, I'm gonna be covering this in a later step. So there we go, the binding has started. And then, then I'm gonna focus on feeding the fabric assembly into this exiting point of the binder, not here at the entry point because this is actually curved inward to keep kinks out of the binding. So I can actually push the fabric in at that juncture, just don't want to fold it. And that keeps the fabric well inside the fold. We're sewing this project with the Sayrite Ultra Feed LSZ sewing machine. And it's set up in the industrial sewing table with workhorse servo motor. Now here's my first inside turn. And I'm going to go rather slow when I do that because uh, inside turns are a little bit more difficult, but this is a gradual one. So I'm going to shove my fabric in here, concentrating on this point. 
even use my fingers to kind of keep it into the fold. If you've selected a vinyl fabric rather than the soft touch, the Top Notch 9 binding looks great with vinyl fabrics or umbrella binding. You can find those at the Sayrite website. Now I'm pretty much back to the straightaway. Now we have an outside turn here that's gradual. These outside turns are pretty easy. Just keep the fabric in at that point. And then once you get around the turn, you can sew under speed again. Now you can also put binding on without a binder attachment. It's just a little bit more difficult. I think a binder attachment is well worth the money. Okay, here we're getting to that light portion. And what we can do is we can actually, because the inside cur curves are difficult, we can actually almost straighten out the fabric at this juncture. So watch what I do. Again, keep it into that fold. That's the one goal. You use your fingers to push it in there if you have to. But here it's not going to want to go in there, so I have to push. And I can also straighten out the fabric a little bit. Don't worry too much about wrinkles as long as you don't sew them in. So I'm not going to be sewing that in even though it looks like I am. So I am actually around that curve. I'm on the straightaway. Let's show what we do with this inside curve when we get to it. Same thing. So we're going to pull it fairly straight. I'm going to push the fabric well into the fold of the, bi of the uh, binding. pretty much that straight away. Now I'm going to the outside curve, which is pretty easy. Now I'm to straight away. This is the beginning point where we started and what I'm going to do is just sew over it a little bit. Sometimes what you might want to do is actually stop sewing at that juncture I actually think you can sometimes do a better job by hand and pull the binder out of the way and then cut it. So it really should be cut with a hot knife here. If you don't have that, you can use a wood burning tool or a soldering gun. Um, that just seals the end of this uh, binding. So I'm just gonna cut it right here. Then what I'll do is I'll make sure that it's tucked as deeply into this area as possible and hold it there and sew the remainder by hand. And then here I'll do a little bit of reversing just to lock the stitch in place. And there we have our overlap. No drilling in your RV is required. We're going to be using an adhesive snap called a snad. So the first thing we want to do is we want to hold this uh, cover up to the area that we plan to snap it in position and you need two people for that. And you want to position it so that everything is where it is where it belongs and put in a couple snaps to basically get your first position. So how's that fitting over there Seth? Yeah, that's about right. So I brought a grease pencil out, which marks well on this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark the fabric, the corner of the fabric here. Is that laying flat? Yeah. And here. Now this isn't the location for the snaps, but this will tell me where I can put the snaps and hit the fabric. Okay, we're holding it up and we're marking where it's going to fall on the outside corners with our grease pencil. And we'll do that down here and on the other side as well. I'm gonna measure from this mark to the mark here. So from this location to this location is 45 inches. We're gonna divide that by three, which gives us about 14 to 15 inches. 
And what we'll do is we'll mark those positions with my grease pencil here, so there'll be a snap here and here, and then obviously one there. We're going to use an alcohol prep pad and prepare the surface where we are going to install the snad. You want to make sure that it's nice and clean for every location where a snap will be installed. Now this light is in a different position and we have to have a snap here, it's, it's not centered. So I measured here and this one is going to have snaps every uh, 14 inches instead of uh, the 15 inches and that's quite okay. Okay, we're going to do the same concept here on the bottom. I have 34 and I'm going to divide it to so snaps someplace fall within 13 to 15 inches from each other. Now here at the top, I just want to put two snaps here. So I'm going to just mark the position down below here with my grease pencil. And I'm not measuring this. I just want to make sure it stays secure. And then obviously I'm going to put one at the corners. So I'm going to clean all those spots well with the alcohol prep pad. This is Primer 94 and we highly recommend it for the SNAD installation. Uh, it is a prep for uh, SNADs. What you, you want to do is you want to break it like that, break the vial, and then the uh, see it coming down to the tip here. Now you have a certain time to use this. That's why I marked all the positions for my snaps in advance. And I just want to get that location where each snap is going to go and let this set up and cure. It doesn't take only a minute or two really, but you've got good uh, working time. So don't worry if you put your snaps on, you know, a half hour to an hour later. You just want to use this up before it dries out on all your locations. Each ampule will serve approximately 15 locations for the snads. So this is a snad and it's a uh, stud and it has a backing, a VHB backing. So don't touch the glue but peel off the transfer paper and there's your backing. And we know that it needs to go here where we marked it at the corner, that's where the uh, tarp's going to be. It's been cleaned and we have a primer on it. And I'm going to put it up fairly high so I can get close to the rub rail or whatever this is called, trim piece. And you want to hold it in position for about a minute if you possibly can, holding pressure on it. So I'm going to do that. Okay, we're just going to continue at each one of our locations. There's our grease pencil. We're going to put it pretty high so that the cover doesn't flap on the edges and hold for a minute. We'll do this for all the locations where we marked and cleaned and used the Primer 94. Next, we'll position the location for each snap and show you how to install them. This is called the Easy Fit um, snap system. And you can see that it has sockets that have a pin in it. And uh, this is a complete kit. So what I'll do is I'll use these to position the canvas. So I actually snap these to each one of the snads and then we can poke our canvas at the exact right spot and if we don't like it, we can reposition it. And that way we get our snaps exactly where we want them. So I positioned the easy fit, not on every single stud, but basically at every corner. And I do have a few extras. You don't have to have a ton of them. You can actually move these around as you need to. So install the ones that you definitely need, which is at the corners first. And uh, I've already basically positioned this with a hole. I'm going to put it through because I know where it goes. And as you can see, with two people, you can actually do quite the job of making sure that snaps are installed exactly where you want them. So we come around to this side. And I can pull fairly taut here. And run it through the fabric. So that's a good position here. We have one here. Got a little wrinkle here. We're going to try to work that out. Yeah, we'll be able to work that out by attaching this one down and letting it pull. There's one in this corner. 
So we're going to pull this one down to there. We don't have one here, but there will be a snap there. If we have one here, oh, let's see, this is going to go up here. So I don't think I'm going to poke this one through yet until I get these, these get snapped. So you just want to keep positioning. But if, you, if you've got serious wrinkles, which I don't think we do, this isn't too bad at all, you can reposition. Okay, well you've got the hole for the snap, but I did punch a few extra holes just to position everything and I'm happy with it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my soapstone pencil and I'm gonna mark basically where each one of these hole locations are. And we'll just start with these two snaps. So I'm gonna take these off and we're going to install snap at those exact locations. Now Sayrite has all kinds of uh, snap installation tools. Today we're using the press and snap tool. So the button goes here and the socket I've already snapped onto this die. So I've got the mark location mark where I want the snap, but I need to reinforce that snap location with excess fabric. So I can trim away the excess fabric when I'm done installing this. If it hangs over the edge, I just want to put it in the general location for the snap to reinforce that location. So there's where I've marked it. Make sure that the button is on the top and we can punch it right through this fabric and the reinforcement to press the lever and the snap is installed with the reinforced fabric. And then we'll trim this excess away later on. Now our snap can be snapped to the snad. And uh, we will continue to install snaps where the easy fits are installed and then move them. With a regular snap stud, you just put this under and pry this up and the easy fit comes off. But with these snads that are dome top, I like to use a small screwdriver and actually use one of these uh, in indents and kind of just pry up with it. And they come off like that. This snap is installed and this one's installed and this one is not. We don't need to use an easy fit here. We can actually just kind of hold the fabric over the snap. I can feel it and you can actually mark the snap. See how that works? You can see exactly where the center is right there. So we'll put a snap here. Our custom RV bra is now complete. Coming up next is the materials and the tools list that we used. We used a fabric called Soft Touch, but many bra covers are made from a quality seating vinyl fabric like Naga Soft, Eversoft, Sumbrella Horizon, and those are available at the Sayrite website. If you have any questions, give us a call or email us. We're glad to help. If you enjoyed this video, click the link in the description below or at the icon at the top right to check out other projects in the Airstream Argosy Renovation Series. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sailrite, thanks for watching.